So here we have the electronic HUD on the right, and to the left of that is my Surface Pro running Super Mario 64 and Project 64, and to the left of Project 64 is a program I wrote which moves the values from Project 64 to the HUD. I'm just collecting some license and such so you can see it update in real time on the HUD. At the top of the HUD are the three displays for the coins, below that is the lice, below that is the stars, and in the middle one I've just used another 7 segment display for the health. And the bottom below the HUD is the Arduino which updates the displays based on the values from the serial port which comes from Project 64. Okay, so this is the uh, circuit. It's not too complicated, it's just a lot of uh, wiring. Uh, so basically we have our 5451 LED driver. We have two of them driving two sets of displays. So they're basically all but one of them are seven segment displays. This one over here, well you can create it how you want, just eight. Uh, groups of LEDs, eight lots of LEDs. Uh, in prototype form I just used another seven segment display because it was easier. But yeah, we just have common data signal goes off to one the I/O of the Arduino and then you have separate clock signals so we can talk to the two different 5451 chips. Now this is not multiplexed and that's why there's a lot of connections but do multiplexing is in some ways more complicated because of the timing. That's why I moved to using the 5451 chips. So there is a lot of wiring involved, but the 5451 chips handle the brightness of the displays. They handle the current limiting, which is controlled by these BRI inputs. So the good thing is you don't need any limiting resistors for the uh, seven segment display. So that's a huge uh, bonus. Now, if you buy multi-digit seven segment displays, they tend to be multiplex, so you will need to buy individual seven segment displays and then group them together. Uh, the only thing else to add really is you should be able to power this all off a um, all off the USB port of your Arduino if you want to. Well, you need to connect it to the PC anyway for the serial port, so it should all run off the um, USB port, no problem. I um, mean, unless you're using the hub, you might have problems. Uh, other than that, just some decoupling capacitors and so on, and it's fairly straightforward, really. Uh, nothing more really to add. Just make sure you get all the connections correct, otherwise you're going to have a hard time. Test each group of, uh, you know, each seven-segment display separately, just to make sure it's all working. You, especially with these um, ones here, where I've only used B and C segments. Uh, to cut down the number of outputs since they only display a one in that digit part. Uh, that's it. Right, let's look at the Arduino software. So first of all we define a number of signals. So we have two different clocks for the two 5451 LED drivers and then we have a common data signal. Next up we have a table which defines which segments to turn on or off to light the numbers 0 to 9. Then we have our HUD variables, power, coins, lice and stars. In the setup part we define our I.O. as outputs, we set the default values, open the serial pool and then display the current HUD values. In the loop part we continuously look for values from the serial pool, if there's enough bytes we can then update the HUD variables and then update the display. So in the update HUD function we update the two sets of displays. So we send a leading value, a starting value I mean, uh, which will tell the 5451 that we're going to send it some values. We then send it a bar graph set of values which is for the power meter and then output num3 is used for three digit uh, numerical values and then we just send it some blank bits because we haven't used all the outputs. And then we repeat for the second set of displays and that's it. This is the clock function. So we have one of two different clocks, one clock for one of the 5451s and the second clock for the other chip. So output bar graph simply sets or sends out a number of logical ones based on the current power meter value. I'm going to worry about the blank digit, but that's basically for removing the leading zeros in the three digit 
displays. So output number will output a single digit for a seven segment display. So it's just a matter of going through checking the input value against its uh, binary value and then send, sending out zeros or one as needed. Then all that output num3 does is call output num but it uses a bit of math to work out the ones, tens and hundreds and that's basically it. Right, so now we're looking at the C++ program which gets the values from Project 64 and then moves them over to the serial port so the Arduino can use them. We have a simple form with a uh, region select supporting both NTSC and PAL versions of the game for Super Mario 64. We have a serial port component and a main timer component which continuously checks for the values. Then we have a standard header file and a C++ file as well. So let's look at the C++ file. Uh, we have a number of variables. I know it's not very good to put them up here, but um, Visual Studio complains a lot if you try and put them in the header file. So in prototype form, I'm just keeping there for the moment. Uh, we have the offset values. So these are the code values, basically, uh, for the PAL and NTSC version of the game, health, coin, knives, and stars. And then, similar to the Arduino, we have health coins, lights, and stars uh, variables. Right, so in this function, we try to get the values from Project 64. We check the region select so we can get the right offsets. And then it's just a matter of trying to get the values actually from Project 64. So we do that using read process memory which we do for each set of HUD values. And if that's successful, and the values have changed since last time, we can then put them into the serial port. Now it's important to only send values to the serial port if they have changed since last time. Otherwise you're going to be continuously sending loads of values down the serial port, and that can cause exceptions and all sorts of uh, problems. And so, yeah, we just repeat that continuously. Uh, here we have a setup function. So what we have to do is we have to try and find the Project 64 window which has its exact title. Then if we can find that we get the process ID and from that we can open up the process, get access to Project 64 and then we can read the base pointer. Now basically on modern computers you can't guarantee on a PC that variables are always going to be at the same address. However, I found Project 64 does store um, the base pointer, so that's a pointer to the emulated N64's RAM at a set address. So unfortunately we can look that up and then add our offsets to that. And if that's fine, that's it. We can enable the timer and update our label. So in the header file, we just have some simple uh, that's for closure, so we just close the handle to Project 64, we close up the serial port. Otherwise, in the time of value, we continuously uh, get the values from Project 64 and send them to the serial port.